Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Just Another Kill Team podcast, connecting Kill Team communities across the globe. If you're passionate about the tactical skirmish game that brings together strategy, lore, and creativity, you are in the right place. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and stay updated with our latest episodes. If you want to support the show, check out our Patreon. Your support means a lot to us. Follow us by using the social media links in the podcast description for all the latest news, and be sure to leave a review to let us know what you think. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, we chat with Carlos and Ace from Spain, currently ranked number one and number three in the ITC. Uh, We chat about what's good, what's not, and we chat about the scene in Spain as well. So here is our conversation with Carlos and Ace. We came out of the uh, COVID really strong, and that gave us like a head, head start, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think all the all the hobbies, all the mini war games, all the like things from our youth during COVID, everyone had a little bit of time to step back and think about what they did in their spare time when they had spare time. Yeah. And mini war gamings with adult money is way more approachable than when we were kids. <laughs> and we're like, one box is like three weeks of allowance or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, I have, uh, there's one stay saying that my mom uh, used to tell me, which was, um, uh, money, free time, or what was the other one? And and then uh, money, free time, uh, interest. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pick two, pick two out of the other three. <laughs> so right yeah. now for me, it's like a sweet spot. I don't know how long this will last. Well, I mean, as number one on the ITC ladder, you know, clearly it's lasted <laughs> long enough this year, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What have you? Uh, actually, I'm kind of curious. What have you been playing? What have you been feeling out over the year? And now that the new edition has come in, you know, where where's your headspace at? What are you going to focus on? Um, well, the thing is, the first leg of the year, uh, I was in a very uh, not very comfortable place. I, I did. I wasn't like finding my groove. Uh, the meta was was dominated by by kill teams that I really don't like. Uh, mm. So I had to change and, and start using um like a different approach so i pack, i pick up the uh the faction that i thought was best for the um for the meta at the time it was that was commandos mm-hmm. uh and did yeah, a killing really with efficient for the beginning yeah. of the year yeah they were they were <laughs> really tough like really really tough they were basically the only kill team that could and was in an advantage against um brava just okay. like, against the goats yeah against the goats yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I tried that, and, and then uh, when the nerf came, as it should have, uh, I didn't realize it quite as fast as I should. So I, I played uh, commandos for a bit longer until I realized that basically with that nerf, you were not as competitive as uh, needed to to get you know results in in really large tournaments. So I, I was trying to find out what could uh, face basically Brood Brothers. Because I really dislike Blue Brothers, and I, I wasn't going to play that. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I could have, I could have played Blue Brothers because I think that they are extremely, they were extremely good. Like they, they probably still are, but I really dislike them. So the only kill team that made sense was Inquisition because Inquisition has enough tools to face basically any other kill team, like any. Uh, and the only the only problem with Inquisition is that you really have to uh, know the the game well. Like you really need to to know all the other kill teams like by heart, and be able to counter anything that they throw at you. And so that's what I did basically. And you and had rest- you know a good practice partner Ace over here. You know went to oh, world yeah. championships yeah, yeah. last year with Inquisition <laughs> agents. Actually, actually, Ace was the person that gave me the the key to Inquisition because I was very lost, and at some point. I just thought, well, I don't think I'm, I'm not feeling it. I don't think I'm, I'm playing well. So he basically uh, brought me to his house one evening and and basically gave me the ABCs. Like this is what you have to be doing. Uh, you had and, an, an Illuminati meeting with the Inquisition agent. Oh, the Inquisition oh, yeah. <laughs> came over and told the agent what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Act, he did that, do that. And and I uh, my my uh, game 
got better by a hundred. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, he is basically the reason that I uh, I am where I am right now. Is there a, think, is that a secret that you can share, Ace? I think. Well, I think we both play a lot together, so we um, improve together pretty much. Mm. All, I, I think the spice community um, have all the little secrets explained all the time in our Discord or or in our WhatsApp groups, and especially Carlos and I, we play together like all the time, once per week, twice per week. Something like that. Um, there wasn't really any tricks on the on the book. There was like something like uh, simple, like you have to be there, you have to have a plan, you have to pre-plan the tuning point one, you have to use the smokes on this way or that way. If your opponent do that, then you do that. Something like that. Play reactive. Don't don't take this kind of secondaries stuff like that. Um, so, something yeah, that the, the experience gave you pretty much. It's, it's something that it, basically anyone can be doing, actually. It's just uh, play a lot, <laughs> like play <laughs> a freaking lot. And that's that's the, the secret, really. Play, play a lot and, and think a lot about the game. I, I I think, think yeah, yeah, yeah. I think constantly the about the game, yeah. I don't play that much or as much as I want. I play a lot, but not that much. But I, I think a lot about the, about the game, pretty much. Every every free time I have, I, I, I think about the, about the game. So that's why. Okay, uh, no, uh, for Inquisition, you, you're saying Travis? I was just saying that Inquisition agents, because you have absolute authority, which lets you stall an opposing opponent's like strategic ploy, knowing when to pop it and not just at the first yeah. available opportunity is really important. Obviously, in the old edition of Kill Team, there are times when you just kind of always do it. But mm -hmm. knowing when your opponent's trying to bait you and knowing when it's important, those are those are important, right? Because yeah. there are some players that always hit the tactical reroll the moment something goes wrong mm. but that's probably not the best use of a command point and absolute authority the first moment it shows up could also be one of those situations yes not only absolute authority but also the nouns the nouns which yes. once per game i think now it's not once per game but oh. cp, CP plus yeah. it's, it's cp plus yeah it's cp plus now yeah, yeah. so it, it was like don't go to get trigger, trigger happy with this don't don't I know that on turning point two is going to be juicy all the times, but try to wait till turning point three or four, because it's going to be super interesting if you can keep it that way. And yeah, but me, I was playing for the last part of the of the edition. I was playing Mandrakes because I love the Vive. I love them. They were really funny. Um, they were really tricky, I think. And they Very were powerful. Still were, have some were, issues that elves do, which is you know sometimes <laughs> a big wall of meatheads hit you and you die. So I uh, yeah I I play one game against Blue Brothers on a on a top eight on our biggest uh, tournament and I was like destroyed like ten to twenty one something like that something terrible um, so yeah they have some problems they they have they, they have at the moment some uh, really um, toxic mechanics like the smoke the infinite smoke was really toxic in my opinion but now I think they are better and they are still going to they they still have some tricks right now and they are more fair. Even, even if they retain the leader ability and the um, and the um, DMO, I think they are way more fairer now. Yeah, they do feel way more fair just on a read because before one of the big things that Mandrakes were able to do was drop an obscurity bubble and just hide three yep. Mandrakes in a bubble, and then suddenly now you're just getting attacked on a thing that you can't interact with yep. unless you're playing the handful of teams that could ignore obscurity. Yep. And, you know, in this edition, obscurity is way less powerful. If you're within two inches of someone trying to be obscured, you ignore it. Yeah. You can shoot into obscurity bubbles. So being able to shoot the mandrakes as they try to stage up is also important. So they have some new openings, but they also got, you know, a default longer charge range, which is not to be scoffed <laughs> at, right? I'm sure that's, oh, I'm sure that's oh, come no. out a couple of times, Ace. Yeah, and the thing is, now you have more CPs, and Mandrake's love of CPs, let me tell you. So you can have you can you can do way more things right now, way more tricks. Uh, they have like a lot of uh, playing to secondaries, even on this edition. So I think they are on a really good position. I, I think they are a lot of more a lot uh, some teams that are way better than them. Elites, for example. Uh, <laughs> but I think elites beats everybody. Uh, so, but after that, I think they are like really really good on the um, waiting for the for the elite nerves. Yeah. I think I think. All the elves are like extremely better now than they were in KT two. Like yep. um, all of them, maple. I, I don't know if all of them, but you know that that seven movement it it changes things dramatically. 
like yes. yeah, for it, all of them. It fundamentally changes all of the movement ranges and all of your ability mm-hmm. to cut, you know, your opponent's scoring opportunities that they're not really expecting. I yes. think maybe the only holdover that's like maybe they didn't make it through necessarily better is hand the archon just because on some levels they've lost a little bit of mobility compared to their peers. Well, I I was I, I played a game against them yesterday and it's mm-hmm. true that they they do not move as much because they don't have the extra dash or anything. But uh, if they get it rolling, it's amazing the things they can do with pain tokens. Like, it's it's oh, yeah. really stupid. Like, yeah. I got a Mandrake yesterday that killed two operatives and then does to a point or something like that. It was, like, like it was ridiculous. Ridiculously good. Yep. Like, yeah. they have Double a punch. Fight. Double fight, yeah. get pain token, take a free dash, and then your opponent's like, "Well, that's not fun." <laughs> they're quite definitely, they have some really fun power power play because they are definitely of the teams. If you get shot at by them or charged by them, and they started with from darkness death, and you, yes. most of them you just like die outright. There's not really much to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, and like one of the yeah. big changes for Hand of the Archon is that you can start the game with pain tokens now, and that's actually a pretty big yeah. deal. And that is 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 like. It kind of makes up for your lack of free dashes, especially because if you take an agent or two, um, your agents, when someone once per turn, when someone on your team gains a pain token, you can choose one of your agents to gain a pain token as well. So it's yeah. it's potentially worth looking into somewhere to get a second slot for an agent um, mm-hmm. so that like if you if you end up like taking advantage of those pain tokens and then trading that agent, you're still going to keep on being efficient with your pain tokens later on in the game that's my album i i maintain that that if unless you're playing against elites you yeah. really never want to, to field a, a heavy gunner and you yeah. play two, two agents just because of what you said like having having two guys in the first turn that that have three flexible aps is bonkers 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 good yeah, because their biggest weakness was always on in the dark, where the doors basically were their were their actual nemesis. Like, you, yeah. you could kill your opponent, but you just can't open the doors fast enough. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. Well, now they don't have. I don't think on on the new into a dark there is not uh, that much that much doors. There is, there is little doors, and on turning point one, nothing is going to happen. So you can open the doors, you can position it well, and then go for the action on turning point two. I think the a lot of things are going their way on this edition for for Hand of the Archon, in my opinion. Yeah, it's just the the wall of fourteen wound ceramite armor yes. that two shots <laughs> oh, yeah. is standing in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, like I, you know, to be fair, Astartes are standing in everybody's way as a wall of fourteen yes. wound meatheads that two shot the majority of things in the game. I have I have to say that even though it's a bit like it's a bit frustrating if you want to play anything that is not a marine, I I really like the fact that that marines. Have, are having their time in the light right now because for I don't know what a year a year yeah, I think it's a year, year and a, a half. year they, they a year came and out a half big, big big fanfare and then they kind of like you know we just stopped playing them yeah and then what everything that, that dominated the meta was either hordes or or maybe fell or um, ravagers Orlando's? Yeah, but, but, yeah, and uh, this is this is like 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 um for me it's it's my pet peeve like um commandos are said to be um a mid range but I I maintain that having eleven operatives and eleven act- activations you are kind of a horde like mm-hmm. you are on par with some of the hordes there on activations and your your uh, minis are so tough so I think that. I, I would count commandos not as a mid range but as a horde. So for a year and a half we've been playing mostly against hordes. So I, I really like the fact that elites are having like a moment to shine. Yeah, and I think even if the elites end up being a little bit less good eventually with a little bit of a nerf, counteraction oh, yeah, and just like the ability of counteraction to let elites basically get to play the game a little bit more is probably a healthy thing in general because the act of going to a tournament you're like oh man i finally get to play space marines and then you walk in and your opponent just sits there waits out six activations and then just like nails you a million times like that's not really you no one is actually having fun there you don't you're not you're not actually feeling any more clever because you waited six activations yeah so now now you actually got to pay attention the whole time and i think that's a good thing yeah yeah i agree no i think the thing that's about contraction is is a fun mechanic 
So we we both have fun. If you can, if you as an all player can anticipate of what am I doing as an elite player, then good for you. If I can do it better, then good for me. So we are and we are and interacting. Also, yep. Counter action is good because it also means that the Eldar have more tools to fight against the horde teams that were kind of like keeping them down yep. before. I, yep. You know, Ace, you mentioned how Mandrakes you played against Brood Brothers and you lost by like ten points because yeah, Mandrakes' worst matchup was if you were going to get out activated, you can be clever. You can sit in a box, but eventually someone's going to have to go do something and start a chain of actions. And if your opponent gets three more activations over you, you're just like, all right, I guess I just die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. That's, that's what happened, yeah. I am a little bit um, sad, I think, that I, I think that everybody should counteract in Conceal. Like, um, because if you, are, you arrive to a point that you can counteract, it's okay that you can counteract on Conceal. Because for Eldars or Necrons and stuff like that, they are in the middle of both worlds, not being able to counteract, but no, not being strong enough or, or uh, enough people to have always the last activation. So I think these range are on a weird spot at the moment, in my opinion. But I don't know, like I have so many, I don't beat some games. But yeah, I think this, because okay. I, I like Contract. Yeah. I actually, I'm curious, Carlos, you know, at the beginning, at the end of, you know, the first year, I think, of competitive play, you'd played Phobos a lot. Have you considered, you know, maybe playing Phobos for a little bit just yeah. to see if yeah. the changes yeah, have, have uh, improved them? They have improved, but the thing is, uh, if I want to play competitively, I, I'm not going to play Phobos because of the uh, set of 14 wounds wall of ceramite <laughs> that will wreck your day. Um, they are very good. They are very fun. I've, I've played a couple of games with them. They are extremely fun. But uh, they are not quite there because they've lost something. Well, not completely lost because the uh, normal warriors have it, but they, they've lost Vanguard, which made them super efficient. Um, and now they are sitting in a spot where they don't have like extreme hidden power. So you're not, you're not killing a Marine, really. Any, any kind of any flavor of Marine that you choose is going to be really hard to take down. Whereas they can basically one-shot you with basically anything. So against other against mid-ranges and, and hordes, I think you are going to have a, have a fun time. But you're going to suffer a lot against um, other elites. So that's why I'm not playing them at the moment. But yeah, I, I am uh, waiting for the uh, hammer to fall on the, uh, on the uh, legionaries and... and Angels of Death and so on and so forth to be able to play them. Yeah, I, I, I intend to do to it. Yeah, yeah I, I think right now, as I've been writing these reviews for Goonhammer, I've come to a bunch of different matchups. I'm like, well, you know, this would probably be a good anti Astartes pick until I look at Nurgle Legionary in the distance, ignoring <laughs> Piercing. And you're like, well, okay, then I Maybe guess they'll just kill you instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. not only Nurgle, because, because Warcommon has it. Be the same, yeah. On all of them. So it's like, yeah. It's and, and like the thing that makes war, uh, Legionary so especially tough is they're not like locked in with the roster. So they'll just, you know, like if, if I show up and I bring six Reavers, for example, you're going to just go Nurgle and you can like see, you can see like yeah. what the opponent has and then just like react to it. Whereas like if you didn't have mm -hmm. Nurgle on your roster, then you can't like flex pick into the into like the counter. Yeah, mm -hmm. to me, that that's that's something that is... <laughs> because one of the things that legioners were like bad last last game was that you couldn't mix uh pick and mix you had to choose two um two gods and that was that uh so that was lame but now it's way too hard like you you can have everything all at once all, all at the same time like you have the best of every world you need a gunner which Thing, so you can get your severe and and your critics. Then you get your uh, uh, you know the demon possessed guy with Nurgle because he's unkillable. And then you get your Shrive Talon with Slanesh because he will basically get whatever he wants to. So they are too tough and they have too many tools at the disposal right now. I think. Yeah, the infinite flexibility is it's, both it's way cool to read and like cool to like think about, but in act actual application means that there's not. It feels right now that Legionary are by far the best of the Astartes oh. level teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only that, it's I am I am a fluff player as well. Like I really 
like the uh, background and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, yeah, well, the gods do not agree on anything. So why would they agree on having, you know, like a, the best kill team there is? It doesn't make any sense to me. Sorry about that. We possibly have like two corn, one Nurgle, one Slanesh, because then corn could point at the other gods and say, ha, see, look, my corn is doing better. <laughs> they would get yeah. mad. There's yeah. no way. No, no way. Definitely not. <laughs> What is, other teams have you guys been enjoying uh, outside of, you know, your two core teams? It sounds like Mandrakes and Inquisition Agents mm -hmm. are there. And, you know, Carlos, you talked a little bit about Phobos. Ace, what else have you been playing in this, this edition? I know, you know, in one of our side chats, you mentioned you were playing some Astartes. Is there a specific one that you've been playing? Yeah, the, the blue ones, the um, Warcoven. I have been playing Warcoven for little. They have so many tools, so different tools. Um, so I, I like them. Like, they have so so different tricks. They, they have more things going on than legionaries that are just you know panthers going on the on the battlefield um they are super super resilient like incredibly good uh i have been playing Phobos too a little messing with them and they are probably one of the best teams that can do the the, the tack ops really like mm -hmm. they're super super um have a really good time against other other kill teams and I have played like two, three games now with Eleuthidian, Star Striders, and mm. oh, they are awesome, like really good. And they have some tools against elites because I was messing and uh, looking for some um, kill teams that can face elites. And I think they have, they have the tools to, to play against the, the Marines, I think. Yeah, and I have been enjoying them like a lot. They, they do. You want to point uh, out? You know, for anyone who's listening who wants to play Star Striders, what tools? I mean, outside of obviously the big melta gun that you fire from the sky, there's yeah. got to be some other stuff. You know, you want to so, share a little. Yeah, yeah they, they have two melta guns right now because you can do it twice. Um, one plasma gun because you can after using your melta gun, your your ship, you can use the the plasma one. So you have more guns in general. Um, and now Elucidia have three APL, which means. She is way more flexible on the battlefield. And the um, Lectromans, Lectromaster, uh, is now on threes. So he can give way more. The, more the, Lectromaster, the Lectromaster has like a really serious punch. Like yes. serious yeah. punch. Yeah, yes. before, before he was four dice on fours, four, four, range six, dev one, rending with lethal four up generally when you shot. And now he's hits on threes. So before I was saying that he used to be one of the guns that you could kind of reliably maybe kill a Marine or kind of mess with an elite because elites were Star Strider's worst matchup. But yep. because it hit on fours, it was basically just, well, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to roll the dice and we'll see what happens. Yep. But hitting on threes, you know, you're going to roll the dice. You're probably going to take off, you know, four to eight wounds pretty reliably, if not a little bit more. If, one, if of things, that, one of the things that I think... Oh, sorry, sorry. Hey, go, I'm sorry. If you if you get a little bit lucky, you can have three or four uh, hits and maybe three or four crits, and that's a lot of goons uh, to try to save for the for the starters. So yeah, I think he's a pretty good tool right now. Mm -hmm. The thing is, um, with any kill team, you have your your gunner with a melt gun, okay, and he's going to run up to a marine and shoot him, and if you are lucky, you, you kill him, okay. But then your your gunner is sitting there and he's going to suffer so much anger for the rest of the uh, team. But you cannot do that against Eldusidia because they. Got six um, of yep, yep, all of the all the gunners can be doing that from from conceal and you know far away from you. So so you're not killing that gunner. That that's one of the uh, best things they have going against against elites, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean that was definitely their only. I think back in the day, Star Striders' bad matchup was elites because if you yes. didn't kill the first two Astartes that hit your line, you just lost. And suddenly the melee marine is running around doinking two people at a time. And you're like, okay, well, we just we just lose. But now we do have the second melta gun on turn two, which is not a thing that you had before. Yep. No. no. And now and now you get to reduce uh, damage everywhere on the map, which is also huge. To to have oh, some more durability. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. The the undaunted explorers is now just yes. flat, just just like it is on Hernkin Jaegers and yep. the. Uh, there's one more team now. Novitiate. Oh, and Novitiates, the new Novitiates team. Oh, yeah, yeah, Novitiates, I mean, basically, the, of the teams that got a... You know, that actually is a fun thing. Have either of you played some of the teams that got kind of like ground-up reworks? Novitiates would be one of them. Ashkin would them. be another one, I think. And then I, I think... 
Yeah, those two would be like the two that stick out to my head because everything else is kind of like roughly similar. Mm-hmm. I know Carlos, you played Breachers in the past, and Breachers got like yeah. a small rework, but they no, at seven it, wounds, I think, are just not. not it's not. not it's not small. Point. It's not small. It's huge. Because the thing is, uh, Navy Breachers used to be like this tough kill team <laughs> that were sitting on eleven activations, and now you have twelve, but you're way softer, like yes, way softer. Yeah, you're so squishy now. So, yeah, so yeah. I, I don't think they've come out well out of the uh, rework. I, I might be wrong, though, because I haven't played them. Uh, I think they have, like, one cool trick, but I'm very, honestly, I'm very surprised that they didn't just get put as eight and nine wound operatives. The mm-hmm. fact that most of them are actually seven now is, honestly, makes them not seem that good to me. They are, they're very squishy. That's, that's the yeah. thing. They're really, and they don't, they don't hit hard. Because they, they still only have two gunners that can shoot the whole the whole map, so they need to be up close and personal. But they are not tough enough to to resist that. So they are not in a very good spot at the moment. I think. I agree. Yeah, that would be that'd be my expectation too. I don't know, Jason. You have any thoughts on uh, breachers? Yeah, I mean, I haven't looked at them that much, but that does sound like a, a cocktail for difficult times. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a couple teams that I feel like have gotten, you know, kind of not ground up reworks or kind of reimaginings. I think of of those Hunter Clay, Novitiates, Warp Coven, we already talked about and Warp Coven seem much better for the transition. Yeah. But I think oh, Castor yeah. Kid, Novitiates, Hunter Clay all got pretty large kind of like structural changes or ability changes. And I think, exactly. it's, you know, there's fun to talk I, about. I know me and Ace, we played Hunter Clay for a couple months when they were in their heyday. Yeah. <laughs> I think Hunter Clade are I don't know I don't know really but uh, I haven't played played them but I think they are weaker now than before. But I think because the the precautions on the doctrines can be like yeah. a really really hard time for them. But I don't yeah, know to be honest. Knowing how to know. juggle them I think is definitely hard. But there are some cool new tricks like the fact that yeah, your we... rust stalkers can go in and double hit now is a huge change of pace. Yeah. Yes. And whether or not that's enough to make them good enough in their bad matchups, you know, like commandos or some of these other like tough teams, kind of mm-hmm. hard to know. I don't know. I, I I genuinely don't know really, but I think they are they have some problems right now. Not only that, because they if they want to feel well, they are now ten always, and if they They're want to feel 10, yeah. if they want to feel five uh, Sicarians, they have to lose either one gunner or the the alpha leader, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is kind of rough for them because they are ten now, you know. I don't think that's that's necessary. But yeah, other than that, they are they have some cool tricks under the sleeve. So I, I'm really curious. Well, I think we are all curious about uh, what teams are going to be dominant, what teams are going to be not that good, because I think we can all imagine or at least have some ideas on the after reading. But that's that, that's not enough because someone, for for example, for me, novitiates were not re- not really good. Oh, and after I, after I I saw them playing against Carlos, I was like, oh, I make a mistake uh, of of Ooh, appreciation. Of Carlos, him. you played against the vicious, and it was a rough yeah, game. And they they kicked my ass. So, <laughs> so badly. Uh, you know, so honestly, badly. one of the funniest stories following you know reasonably competitive kill team over the last couple years is you know mm-hmm. vicious are one of those teams that's like everyone's like oh, they're just seven wound girls. What's the worst that could happen? And then everyone wow. comes out like shell shocked. They're like, oh, they had infinite dice. They never died. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's really bad right now. Like it's it's they are in a spot that either you kill them straight away, you you kill them uh, completely, or awesome. they are basically you one shot them, or you're they're, they're completely fine, and then and your yeah. your ass is, is kicked basically, which is stupid. <laughs> they are very yeah, think- very very tough. Just to explain for anyone who doesn't, who hasn't read Novitiates, which I wouldn't be surprised if people haven't, the combination of Defenders of the Faith, which is all of the girls take half damage on objective markers yes. or controlling mission markers, which is very powerful oh, if you have okay. access to recon and you can yep. create mission markers by killing yep. your opponent. Yep. yep. So that's step one. And then oh, you right. combine it with Blessed Rejuvenation, which is whenever you spend a faith point at the end of whatever that action is, so a fight, a shoot, whatever, you know, your opponent shoots you, you fight someone else. If you use any faith points, you gain that many faith points plus D3 life, which yes. means between the two of them, your seven wound model generally acts around a nine wound model when you get a charge. And if you don't kill them in one combat step, they have generally rerolled dice and now they heal, you know, D3 plus one, D3 plus two, maybe D3 plus three, have, even if three, you take yeah. intervention. They have another thing, another tool that is really cool because uh, uh, their comms has like a marker. 
uh, that they, they can move like eight inches a turn. And anything within three inches of that marker cannot reroll any attack dice. Okay. But if you're charging them, you don't have any rerolls. And unless you kill them, they're going to kick your ass. So <laughs> they are so tough. Yeah, and they've got one of the big guns. You know, they've got the Eviscerator, four attacks on fours with, I think, Ceaseless, five, ceaseless. six ceaseless. brutal damage, which is basically enough to kill anything, even a Marine, yeah. Yeah. especially when backed up by half damage once. So, you know, it takes three hits to kill the Penitent, and if she rolls four hits and does enough damage, you just die. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and it's very crazy. The, the the well, it's not a sniper, but the, the, condemnor. Condemnor, the, the condemnor is also really good. Oh, even, so it's good. even better than a sniper. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, a so truck. for anyone anyone who doesn't know, the condemnor is four attacks on threes. It used to be two three piercing two or dev two piercing piercing something. It's now it's one. four attacks on piercing threes, one. three three, dev two, piercing one, silent permanently because it's a crossbow and not a gun. Yep. And an anti psyker which probably won't matter most of the time unless you're playing Warcoven, in which case it'll matter a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it, the imperative is so good that you're always going to take her. And then yes. you will be you will be facing maybe I don't know maybe a corsairs and yeah that guy they, those guys have like a, a psychic and that psychic is no good against her or yeah. I don't know legioners there's so many psychic things I, that's something that I really like about this new edition there's there's many more and the psychic thing it's better worked into the rules now. Yeah, I think that's one thing that I think all of us probably agree on is that a lot of the rules feel a little bit more like baked in now, like a little bit more yeah. holistically implemented, which I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan yeah, yeah. of. Yeah, I agree. But it, but it also means that things like the Condemner, which were miserable in the old edition, remain even more miserable now because oh, the yeah. damage actually went up instead of being 2-3. And sometimes you could go into a shooting action hoping that a Condemner <laughs> would just like land four normal hits. It's not probably going to do that anymore. It's probably just going to delete any seven wound operative, almost guaranteed. Yes, um, and probably some eights as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing about novitiates that they, they they lose every uh, long range gun because they don't have um, eyes of the emperor. I think is the name mm-hmm. anymore. So they cannot use pistols. Uh, yeah, long range pistols now. Yes. Other than the condemn norm, so I think it's fine to that they have one gun, one good gun. I think it's it's okay. It's it's alright. Yeah, it's probably good that we moved away from the plasma pistol being a yep. four dice on twos, five, six, yeah. AP two with yeah. a reroll, never missing. <laughs> so it's yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That that was the best elite killer in the game. Yeah. By yeah. far. It was, I think it was like the best gun in the game, just like flat out. Like it had infinite yeah. rerolls and guaranteed crits and just, it only cost yeah. you one CP, but I would pay one CP for that gun 100%. every yeah, yeah. turn, which they did. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, they could they could do the uh, when they, they were in the uh, uh, control points uh, markers. They they had, they got that two CP thing where they can shoot as well. So mm-hmm. if you did it well, you could you could shoot twice with that in the, in the same turn. So basically, yeah. that's two marines gone away. That was like the old defenders of the faith. So it'd basically be like you yeah. wait until the last activation when you have two targets. You run out and you shoot one, and then the next turn it doesn't matter if you get initiative or not because you use defenders of the faith to shoot again. And if you did have initiative yeah. and there's a third target, then your one leader would just like essentially it feels like killing three space marines in one activation. It's ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, it was ridiculous. But they are very good now, and people were saying like, "No, oh, yeah, no, these are not very good now." And that's, no, you are so wrong. <laughs> they are very good, very, very. Good. I think, his, yeah, historically, that you know, the mitigation of damage to half one time in a sequence was part of the reason why Star Striders were so incredibly powerful for that brief period of time when you could do it on every single fight and shoot action. Because yeah. you would have a single operative take like three attacks and then make it through, and you're like, "Oh, that was fine," <laughs> which is I, which is a lot. It, I think it's a bit unfair uh, the way it is now because all the uh, damage reduction has been gone down. Like everyone has like worse damage reduction or almost everyone. So any factions that have like uh, like that, like uh, Star-, Star Striders or Novitiates, that they do it every single time someone shoots or fights against them, makes them really tough. So I don't know. I, I'm, yeah. not, I, I'm not a huge fan of that right now. Yeah, if I were to have one reasonably large complaint on some of the 
the way the teams have made it into this edition, it feels like a lot of the nerfs that kind of made it into the last edition to kind of soften up some of the play patterns kind of got rewound. Like I was writing up the Felgor Ravagers review and I realized that no, basically all the nerfs that happened throughout <laughs> all of last year basically got rewound. So they've got their three 11 wound operatives, their yep. ambush now lets you do normal to crit, which is kind of crazy. And uh, oh, and, and a miss to a normal, which is also crazy. And some of the yeah, operatives, you know, hit on threes now, which they didn't. <laughs> so. But the thing is, they've they've lost relentless, which which is significant. And the other thing is, um, because there's you cannot do any more the uh, I charge and then I I uh, tap the point. That's true. Which was their basic uh, way to to get ahead. They cannot do it anymore. So they are still very good. Like they, they are like like as you said, they. Uh, the um, all of the nerfs were in, are not there anymore, except of the uh, relentless thing. Yeah, I think they are not as good as they were because of that. They they also lose they also lose the toxic grenade, which was oh, which so there. toxic, <laughs> so on toxic. The, the was... so. Yeah, I'm so happy about the new toxic toxic Jailindra stuff like that. I am so so glad they removed that. Not remove, but rework. Reworked, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Spain has come up with a tier list ahead of most other regions, I think, you know, just uh, to talk about like what you guys think is really powerful. Mm -hmm. Legionary all the way up at the top, if I remember correctly, you guys want to talk about any, what were some of like the core discussion points when you guys were coming up with the tier list that maybe people didn't hear about? So the thing about the tier list was, uh, it was created uh, after Laza and myself, Uh, we're doing 12 hours of podcast. So... We were just, um, uh, we, we have been drinking, we have been talking, and we are having fun. And then we discovered that Alberto Cortez, uh, the guy with the most awesome app for oh, Kitten. Yeah. Wonderful app. We'll, we'll, we'll add a link to that just because you shouted it out, and it's probably yeah. good that everybody gets a chance to see it. Oh, yeah. It's really, it really, really great. Yep. Yeah. So we were having, doing our podcast, and after that, uh, we, uh, Alberto just uh, upgrade the the app, uh, and we we have been able to to do a tier list, and it was like, why not? You know, let's do a tier list, and so we we did it. But we like we don't have uh, enough experience. Of course. don't take yes. so, tier so, list so super what serious. What Ace is saying is, do not take this as <laughs> yes. Hollywood because they were basically drunk and so tired. Yes. So <laughs> so don't 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 ever take a tier list like gospel, and and especially not this one because we don't have enough. Uh, practice game to know everything i think we all know after reading stuff that what is going to be strong like legionaries war coven intercept um, angels of death uh inquisitor legends uh blue brothers i think they are we can all agree that they are in a good spot at least and after that everything is a little bit blur for example i was explaining novitiates i think they were rubbish but after playing against them it was like oh they are amazing so mistakes are going to happen yeah, yeah, at yeah, your yeah. list but no, i think i think like you know day one tier lists are always going to be a hard one right yeah yeah they were fun i mean they were a, a fun tier list to make like uh, tied into um and knowledge where is everybody and after the the a plus tier or the a tier everything goes into blur because i was like i don't know i don't know Lata, where do you want to place this team <laughs> Whatever, do, do whatever you know. I don't know. Uh, plays are liking DRC. They are so bad, etc. Uh, I don't know. It's something fun to 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 discuss. Right now, there is no because I think it's fun when we have different uh, meta games on on the states or in Spain because we play on different boards. I think that's not going to happen anymore, or at least for the first six to eight months, I guess. Because we are I going guess to probably the first the first year we're probably everyone's just going to play the GW maps yeah. as a majority thing just because they're there and you know if everybody has Volcus why not and the Volcus terrain is sick I assume Spain has bought oh. the oh, lion's yeah. share of Volcus on the entire oh, yeah. continent yeah yeah Volcus uh, is great like like, is great. Had, yeah. like some games this weekend that were so good like yeah. Volcus is going to be great yeah yep yep and into a dark also really popular in Spain. Not so mm-hmm. much, Meta Decima. Um, I don't know if this is going to be played. Carlos like it, I don't. I don't know. I'm going to try um, it at the New York Open just because I want to get everybody's feedback on the new 
terrain and the new mission packs. Like, I think I'm going to try to have it be a quarter of the tournament is set up on random boards. A quarter of it is on beta decima, a quarter on Volcus, and a quarter on in the dark, just so that everyone gets a chance to try it out because it's a new edition. GW gave us mission layout, so let's give it a try and we'll see if everybody, you know, likes them or doesn't. Agree. Yeah, I agree. We are no. So our next tournament is this Saturday of 40 people. Mm -hmm. And yes. they have one third of each, so that's nice. So one third of Volcus, one third of Into the Dark, one third of um, Beta Decima. So I'm really eager to because I, I can I can be mistaken. Maybe Beta Decima is awesome. Um, so I'm really eager to play some games on them and see what's going on with that. I, I have played like three games in my life of Beta Decima, four tops. So I don't know. I, I'm really I'm really eager to know what's going to be about beta yep but carlos you've been playing a little bit more beta decima yeah have I've you played. run into the new the new way to do non-reciprocal shots on beta decima <laughs> uh, yeah, actually has but i, I don't think that is that's a problem really I, I i actually liked the way it works now um the only the only really iffy thing about beta decima is that it's too better by far like it's um Basically, everything is going to happen on the gantries, and uh, or most mostly everything. And there's no there's no uh, cover there. So only what you bring, only the uh, small barricades or the portable barricade or the heavy barricade. But that's not nearly enough. I think that the game would be better if they uh, implemented the um, old. Um, uh, it's like you get a free points. two barricade situation on Beta Decima or something. Oh, oh, you could do that, or you could, uh, you know, the on the beta decima on the uh, on the actual box, the um, objectives used to be uh, pieces of terrain that yes. gave you cover, yes. and that was interesting for me like, because it gave you like a bit more on the, on those countries. So between those and the um, and the barricades, I think it might be a bit better. But I think it's it's fun because one of the things that that the guys in workshop have done is that. Basically, you can jump anywhere now. Like, okay. there's no, there's no place you cannot reach really on those maps, which is a good thing because it, it's more mobile. It's it's more fun. One of the things that was really uh, uh, baffling about the last edition Beta Decima is that if you were playing Arlequins or or Phobos, you were you were great, but if you were playing mostly anyone else, you couldn't reach most of the map. And that was like very f boring. And now they've actually uh, at least mitigated that. So I think it's it's worth trying. I've had like three games now on Beta Decima, and I've had fun on all of them. Mm. Yeah, I think Beta Decima is a, a hard one. Jason has been noodling around with uh, setting up, you know, not the new non-reciprocal shot using the gantries and sitting on the floors and trying to tap people with the lip of your base sticking out, you know, just the way that we used to do it. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's, I think, that's, you know, so that, by the letter of the law, lose. absolutely, you could do it. So Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It we, becomes super concealed well. even with an engage order, which is just bananas. Yeah. But do Jason play Angels of Death, don't you? Um, oh, I've, do you, do you play I played. Yeah. I've like I've tried both. Um, I've done a few games on Beta Decima now, and I think like smoke grenades being universally available is a big deal, because like if a lot of the trouble that people are having is like getting around fast enough and um, staging somewhere safely, a smoke grenade kind of helps you out with both. Yeah, well, for me, the 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 angels of their sniper is going to have a really fun time on the on the country. Like if you if you oh, try to get into the objective, then you are going to die. That that guy is going to have fun anywhere. In, like, anywhere, really. Yeah. Maybe not that much. But, well, even on Volcus, yeah, it's going to have fun. Yeah. In Volcus, he's he's going to be bonkers, and and on Into the Dark, he he just laughs. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Well, there is there is for me the problem with Beta Decima right now is, is is that so many people now ignore light cover, have sick light. Like there is so many teams in the game that can do that. That it can be a problem for 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 beta decima. Yep. Yeah, there is more seek light, but we did lose indirect, so I think it kind of washes out for the most part. Like seek light shows up a lot more, but before that would have been indirect, so it's probably better. Yeah. I have to say, I have to say that I really, really like the fact that grenades are not seek light. Like because on the on the uh, 
last edition, one of the things that happened all of the time is whoever had last activation was basically going to lob a grenade into whoever got into uh, an advanced position. And now that's not going to happen as much. And yep. it, it allows for a more, uh, a better game. For a level game. game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there's less there's less guarantees in this edition, I think, which I think is probably a good thing. You know, it's no longer obscurity as you can't shoot. Now you can shoot so you can make those risk reward calculations, which is probably what we want rather than everything being decided by I hit you with an AP2 gun. So you die yeah, instantly that. and you yeah. and yeah, you're just rewarded for just understanding that, yes, AP2 guns are good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about, about about calculations. I think the game is way less calculated because at the end of Kill Team 2, um, a lot of people uh, are able to or were able to calculate the result of the game after turning point two or three. Like this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and then we are going to reach this point that I, I am going to win or you are going to win. Right now, is I think it's going to be more enjoyable, the last turning point especially, because something like one kill can turn out turn the game. Like everything can turn the game. If I can score one more primary if I can score one more tag up, or if I can kill one of your models and you don't get to kill one of mine, then maybe I can. Then my gambit uh, get uh, grow uh, grow. Uh, I get more points from my gambit and from my kill up, for example, and you don't. Um, and then I can have like two or three uh, points of difference, and then I won. So it's going to be way more interesting right now seeing a a, a kill team play or playing even playing a, a kill team game. Because the last turning point is going to be way more, uh, it's going to be more impactful. Yeah, more impactful in the in the game. Yeah, yeah. You know, in your experience in the edition, like playing a bunch of games in this edition so far, mm -hmm. have you felt like games have felt very close? Have you seen a lot of blowouts? Yes. I yes. feel yes. like games have felt closer to me most of the time, and blowouts have seemed harder to get. But I'm just curious yes. if that's also yep. been the case on your end. Yeah. That's that's my my impression as well. Like I think that the uh, the games get very interesting if you're playing against someone uh, which is not even close to your to your skill level, but it understands the game a bit. Uh, you're going to have a harder time pulling a, a blowout because things like uh, alpha strikes are not are no longer happening, and you cannot play as recklessly with your operatives as you did, uh, you know, in last edition. Yep. So. Everything comes down to uh, to how well you you can uh, maximize your your whatever you're playing at your your primary, uh, but you don't get to uh, cancel the other guys as much because yeah you know what's his his stack up but you don't know if he's going for primaries or kill ups or whatever so it's it's always it's, it's more interesting and and way more difficult to predict what the other guys are doing so it makes for closer games yeah we and faster games too i think i think when we get used to kill team the games are going to be faster like we should be able to finish uh one regular game of kill team in 1 hour and a half because right now uh, the turning point one turning point one should be super fast like way faster than the previous edition a lot of different mechanics are on this on this way. Like you can now close your own operatives, so it's it's more difficult to have. Um, we call it in Spanish analysis paralysis. I don't know if that translates well. No, analysis paralysis is the correct term. Yeah, you see the entire decision tree, and you're trying yes. to calculate all twelve choices. But when really, it's never been about all twelve. It's like maybe three or four of them matter, yep. so you can identify those a little bit easier. So right now is I think the the game is should get faster after after well right now not right now because we are all learning we have to check a lot of the manual but when we have one year of edition something like that I think we can have more tournaments with one and a, one and a half hour which is really good because I like the game shorter more condensed and I have more more time to have fun have some beers with people so yeah you're not looking forward to the uh, probably four hour rounds of the world championships later this no, year <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> please no don't kill me no not again 
<laughs> well, I think they are, they are looking into it. So maybe we have more rounds and less time oh. per round, which yeah, would be know, last year. Yeah. Last year I played four. I think you played a four hour round last year, right, Ace? I play I play one one or two <laughs> four hour and was like, I, I don't want to play this game anymore. Please kill me. Oh, <laughs> Please kill me. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I think my cutoff is about three hours on a tight game. A four, I did I did two four hour rounds. I was like, this is a, this is a little rough, but you know, I was playing Pathfinders at the World Champs, and people were yeah. like, I've never seen this team. I was like, all right, fine, let me pull out the twenty inch <laughs> ruler. Uh, okay, this is the max <laughs> grenade throw. You know, just don't. Good luck. Yeah, okay, twenty one <laughs> inches, which, and they were like, okay, I guess I can not avoid. It. I was like, no, can't avoid it. Just make sure that it doesn't hurt when you when I throw it. Yeah. Uh, so actually, I, I, tra- oh, are you coming to the to the to Atlanta, Travis? Um, I will be there. I will be there in some capacity. I think so. Okay, that's great. That's great. So uh, we'll be able to hang out a little bit. Um, actually, you know, this this brings up a, a fun little topic. You know, you guys mentioned that you're having one of the first forty person Sp- Spanish tournaments in this weekend coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How are you guys managing some of the new rules, kerfuffles that have come up in the new edition? I know in our last podcast, we talked about how barbed wire and barricades on doors and access points are kind of a hot button issue. Because if you set them you know, just an inch away from a door, suddenly you can't walk that through a door combust. unless you've got seven inches of movement. Like, what are you guys doing about that? So right now, we are both TO right now because our first, tourna- uh, first tournament, we, we're both the TO there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are playing raw right now like it is what it is and and i think it should get fixed and to be fixed you need to play games so you can mm-hmm. uh, have a motive to, to complain i think we all know that this is like fucking broken shit but <laughs> at some point i think they will fix it we were putting less into it because it's really problematic on one on Half on of three the, maps. the dark. Yes, three yeah, out of six. Three, on three maps. Yeah, out of six. The other, the other, the other three are fine. They, they, so you're, we, you're great. We were putting less, less terrain, less uh, of that uh, map packs. But other than mm-hmm. that, yeah, we are playing it raw, and at some point, it, it will get solved. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of curious because I know there's like there's that there's some like stuff about maybe like how jumping works when off of ladders and a couple of these other things. I was wondering if you guys ever had like pre-ruling rulings or if you guys are just going to play stuff raw. You know, my obviously I've always been a big raw person because GW has been pretty good about fixing stuff in a pretty <laughs> timely manner. So I kind of figure... It's, it's, it's not curious. only that, if, if, if you're doing house rules, you, your tournaments, which I, I think they, they take into account by what I've seen in the community videos about how they uh, nerf things and, and buff things, your tournaments are going to be taken into account, but they are not doing the same as the other tournaments because you're not using the same rules, so, which is not very fair. I think I, even if I don't like the thing like uh, the Razor Wire and things like that, I think you should be playing it as it is uh, unless Workshop does not face the issue pretty yeah. soon. But they've been doing it pretty quickly. Like... It's three months. Three months is the uh, longest time you have to wait for for either an FEQ or or a uh, data slate, and that's not that long, you know. To basically, uh, you know, do not use the the uh, rules as a, as a reading. I think. Yep. Yeah, I think it's a it's an exciting time for all the all the communities. I think you know globally, there's a lot of energy behind Kill Team in Spain. Obviously, has got some big big energy. You guys want to talk about any other tournaments coming up in the near future? Some stuff to talk about for in case there's any Spanish fans listening on a Just Another Kill Team podcast? Uh, well, uh, we have like, like the major, uh, which is yeah. one of the uh, big established tournaments in Madrid. It's mm-hmm. coming at the uh, second weekend on November. Ninth. Um, ninth, uh, ninth the, the ninth. Second, oh, second, yeah. second weekend, yeah. yeah. And... I think that we might get to 60 or 80 players. Uh, so that's that's huge. I think it's going to be a great tournament. And a, and a good experience for us people going into the into Atlanta, which yeah. is going to be huge. As much games as you can get, uh, it's going to be like awesome for you. Yep. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a it's been uh, fun having you guys on talking about all sorts of things from this edition. You know, we I think we covered kind of the gamut as far as teams go. We touched a little <laughs> bit on like Warp Coven, Astartes, you know, Novitiates being you know kind of bonkers good. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Uh, yeah. There's some, uh, the good thing, I, one of the things that I like really a lot is like, uh, we've talked about like the big uh, suspects right now, but I think there are, there are teams there that we haven't yet seen the best of. Like, okay. for instance, I, I have the uh, suspicion that a Saction Squad, which was one of the worst teams in Kill, Kill Team 2, might be really better now. They are amazing. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. So, a so famously an exaction squad player for a strong <laughs> period of time. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, is, it's a really exciting time because we think that we know, but we really have no idea. And, no, and it's, idea. It's, 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 it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Actually, you know, on that note, you know, before we head out, everybody pick one team that you think could be room for a sleeper pick. Ace it, or Carlos, it sounds like you want to pick exaction squad. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. I cannot show you now, but I'm painting them right now as we talk. <laughs> okay. Well, you also need them for Inquisition agents anyway, so that's cheating. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry, yes, not sorry. Uh, for me, I would say a Jagir with the new mines, because right okay, now the yeah. mines stop you on the spot. So that that's can true. be a yeah. that can be a huge uh, change for them. Yep. What about you, Jason? Any uh, sleeper picks? Um, I mean, Scout Squad kind of stands out to me. Like they've got some real like tricky shenanigans, and they've got a lot of re rolls. Yeah, I think mine. After doing a bunch of writing for everything, I think Higher Tech Circle is definitely yep. a fun one. Like oh, yeah. they seem kind of obviously good, but they also have some issues. But man, you can really just ramp out the damage. Like you could just chuck like twelve dice on one target in one turn, and that just seems wildly powerful when you can put all of the keywords on a, on a pair of guns. Yeah, overkill. Yeah, because I think one of the fun combos there is you can, if you really want to delete something with extreme prejudice, you can have mm. the apprentice put the gun on someone else, have your leader command that person to fire, and then switch to yourself and then magnify through that person and just dump like an infinite amount of dice on a single target. Yeah. yeah, you you will get destroyed, and any any target will get destroyed, pretty much. Yeah, because I think like it's like lethal five rending or severe rending plus whatever whatever ceaseless you have from magnify, and suddenly your opponent's like, I guess I'm just it doesn't matter what your profile is, I'm just gonna roll all crits <laughs> like six times. <laughs> yeah, let let me just die. Yeah, there's some definitely some fun combos. Anyways, Ace and Carlos, two of the best players in the world right now, as far as uh, as far as you know, most most estimations, and obviously by the one metric we have, the ITC. Thanks for coming on yeah. and connecting with just another Kill Team podcast. It's fun. Thank it's you. always fun talk, talking about uh, the Spanish team or Spanish Kill Team scene because you guys are definitely one of the most active scenes worldwide. Thank you very much for having us. Yes, thanks for having us, and Jason. See you. And as always, thank you, listeners, for listening until the end.